what is up guys welcome back to the channel and welcome to today's video for today's one i thought we would look at a team profile for english a premier league team liverpool Now, looking at the players that the Reds have at their disposal, we start off with the goalkeeper. In Allison. Liverpool have a very good, very reliable and very stable goalkeeper. This is a player who understands how the game develops before things start to happen. So he's just able to predict more or less what the opposition team is trying to do and then just sort of rally his defenders and the rest of his team into getting into better positions to just nullify the threat. Speaking of nullifying the threat in centre-back positions in front of him, I think we will find firstly Virgil van Dijk. Now, the Dutch captain is very strong, very physical, he's a fantastic defender and he's an incredible leader. Van Dijk is the kind of player where if his team goes down by a single goal or even two goals, you'll see van Dijk doing his best to try and rally and motivate his team forcing them and sort of inspiring them to try and get the equalizer and eventually the winner. And if the team is struggling to get goals, we will see Van Dijk as well shifting into positions higher up the pitch, getting into the opposition box to pose a threat from set pieces like corners and free kicks. I think partnering Van Dijk will probably see Frenchman Ibrahim Konate. Now, Konate has perhaps struggled to cement a place in the starting 11 at Anfield, but he'll be looking to build on some good performances last season. In Konate, I think Liverpool have a very young, very talented centre-back who is just as solid as Van Dijk, but perhaps maybe lacks a bit of the composure and discipline that his captain just displays in spades. At left-back, Liverpool have a very reliable attacking threat in Andy Robertson. Now, Robertson doesn't necessarily like to go up front, but he does like to play long balls from that left-back position, just trying to distribute the ball all over the pitch and cause havoc amongst the opposition defenders. At right-back, I think we'll see another exciting player in Trent Alexander-Arnold. Very often we see Trent Alexander-Arnold dribbling forward with the ball at his feet, just trying to get the ball to players in front of him, looking to score goals, looking to create opportunities for others. But we also do see Trent score goals of his own as well. And this sort of gives him an extra dimension of flexibility to his game. So I would not be surprised if we do see Trent Alexander-Arnold employed in a more midfield role at times as well. Speaking of the midfield, the first midfielder I'd like to talk about here is Wataru Endo. Now, Endo joined Liverpool last season and just brought a kind of destructive element into the heart of their midfield. Endo's the player who's not afraid to get down and dirty, getting stuck into tackles with the opposition players, and just trying to bring a bit of physicality to Liverpool's midfield game. Alongside Endo in the centre of the park, I think we will see Argentine Alexis McAllister. Now, McAllister as well can win the ball back from the opposition, but that's not what he's primarily expected to do. McAllister's main role here will be to just introduce an element of control into Liverpool's midfield, distributing the ball, keeping things calm, and then just trying to dictate a bit of the tempo in the heart of their midfield. But in McAllister, I think Liverpool have a player who's very intelligent and who can move the ball quickly. And this plays directly into their game plan of wanting to play counter-attacking football. The final midfielder I'd like to talk about here has got to be Hungarian attacking midfielder Dominic Sobozalai. Now, while Endo will be doing the defensive work and McAllister will be playing that holding midfield kind of role, I think Sobozalai will be the player who is expected to run with the ball at his feet, take opposition defenders on and just try to create extra space for the wingers. I think Sobozalai will also be tasked with sort of invading the opposition box when Liverpool are trying to attack on the wings and just giving them an extra body and an extra option to pass into in the box. So Bozala is also no slouch when it comes to scoring goals, so I will not be surprised to see Dominic Sobozala rack up quite a few goals and assists for Liverpool this campaign. Talking about the goals, I think at left wing we will see Colombian winger Luis Diaz. Now Luis Diaz played a very important role in Colombia, making it to the finals of the Copa America this season. Now, I think Luis Diaz as well does bring a sort of element of unpredictability to this Liverpool team on that left wing. He's the kind of player who's not afraid to take opposition players on in 1v1 situations, get out wide to deliver crosses in, but primarily he looks to cut in and take shots, just setting alarm bells ringing constantly in the heart of the opposition defence. 
on the opposite wing, on the right hand side of the pitch, I think we will see Egyptian winger Mohamed Salah. Salah does so much for this team. He can dribble, he can score, he can assist, he can create chances for others, he can create chances for himself. Mohamed Salah is not the kind of player who we will see going out wide and trying to deliver crosses in. Instead, we'll see him kind of trying to link up with the players around him, trying to cut in and then try to score himself. Goal scoring is definitely one of Mohamed Salah's specialities. And when he's absent from the squad, Liverpool really, really miss the Egyptian superstar. And finally, at the tip of Liverpool's attack, I think we will see Uruguayan striker Darwin Nunes. Darwin Nunes, like Luis Diaz, performed very well in the Copa America for Uruguay. And I think Darwin Nunes will be looking to bring that kind of form and that kind of mentality into his season here with Liverpool. He's going to be looking to be more clinical. There were periods where Liverpool did need him to score goals last season. And while he was getting into good positions, he was linking up with other players. His finishing just let him down far too many times. And I think when Darwin Nunes is able to play well with other players, players like Mohamed Salah, like Luis Diaz and like Dominic Sobozalai, I think we'll really see this young centre forward flourish at Anfield. In terms of the tactics that Liverpool will use this season, I think new coach Arne Slot is pretty much going to continue with what was implemented by Jurgen Klopp at Anfield. They're still going to be sticking with this quick counter-attacking style of play and that classic 4-3-3 attacking formation. This will allow Liverpool to just break very quickly, just catch the opposition team by surprise, using their wingers with pace to just completely eliminate the opposition wingbacks from the equation and then just try to catch them off guard. I think Liverpool will also be looking to overwhelm the opposition with numbers in their attacking third. We will see the fullbacks in Andy Robertson and Trent Alexander-Arnold both shifting up front. These players will either be looking to come more centrally into the game to sort of go into those spaces that are created when the wingers go out wide or alternatively they will be doing their job of going out wide so that the wingers can then become more central and then we'll also see central midfielders like McAllister and Sobozalai trying to make up extra bodies in that extra third giving them options to go into and as I said earlier just looking to overwhelm the opposition with pace with ability and with sheer numbers. Liverpool's midfield role here will be simply just to win the ball back as soon as possible and then to just cycle it forward. They make up an extra line of defense in front of Van Dijk and Konate just to create a bit of stability and a bit of a buffer for any teams looking to try and catch Liverpool on the counter-attack. I think, however, they do need to be mindful of the gaps they leave behind them when they push up to support the attack. It does leave a few holes that can be taken advantage of by other teams, but all in all, Liverpool seem to have put together a very solid team with everybody who seems to understand exactly what is necessary of them in this team. Okay, on to the verdict. Now, when we look at Liverpool's campaign last season, the Reds didn't do too badly in the Premier League. It was a massive improvement over the previous season where Liverpool finished 5th with 67 points. Last season, they managed to finish 3rd with 82 points. They managed to convert a lot of their losses from the previous season into wins, but they still managed to end too many matches as draws, and I think that came back to bite them at the end of the season. Liverpool have been on, I wouldn't say a decline, but... They haven't exactly been up to the standard that was expected of them or the standards that they hit in that Premier League winning season. Obviously, that can be attributed to the fact that they lost crucial players like Roberto Firmino and Saudio Mane. So the main goal for Jurgen Klopp in these last few seasons has been to sort of rebuild. And that's why we've seen players like Luis Diaz and Darwin Nunes join the team. And maybe they haven't hit their prime yet. But I think it's looking very promising for them based on their performances in the Copa America. In the Europa League, Liverpool were knocked out in the quarter-final against eventual winners Atalanta. In the FA Cup, they were also knocked out in the quarter-final stage against eventual winners there as well in Manchester United. However, Liverpool did make it to the final of the League Cup and saw themselves emerge victorious 
over a Chelsea team that was looking to just upset them. But I think just as a whole, Liverpool look like a very, very well-constructed team, a team that understands what is expected of them, and they just go out there to attack. And that's why they've managed to just gather so many fans in the last few seasons, is because now we're seeing a Liverpool team that is solely dedicated to attacking. I think if we look at this team and we analyze them per position, in defense, Liverpool look very good. They've got good defenders and they've got a certain amount of depth as well. However, I am a little bit concerned about their right back position because there is quite a bit of speculation around Trent Alexander-Arnold right now and that center back position as well. But I think if they can hold on to these two players, Liverpool have a very good, very solid defensive unit. So in terms of their defense, Liverpool get a 4 out of 5 from me. In terms of their midfield, Liverpool here, I think, struggle with depth. They have players who each can perform a certain duty, with Endo serving as a breaking down of the opposition, McAllister looking to just distribute the ball, and Sobozalai looking to just provide an additional attacking option from the midfield. But if anything happens to these players, I don't see Liverpool having experienced players to replace them. Yes, they can call on some of their younger players, like Harvey Elliott, to come off the bench, and perform certain roles, but I don't think it will be done to the extent of these players. So based solely on the lack of depth, in their midfield, Liverpool get a 3 out of 5 from me. Up front, I think Liverpool have great, great players who've hit form at just the right time. As I said earlier, Luis Diaz and Darwin Nunes did fantastically well at the Copa America. Cody Gakpo performed very well for the Netherlands at the Euro 2024. So now I think Liverpool aren't really going to struggle too much without Mohamed Salah. I think another major positive with all of these attacking players for Liverpool is all of them are kind of interchangeable and very flexible. If you ask Mohamed Salah to play centrally, as a centre forward he can do so. If you shift Darwin Nunes or Luis Diaz onto the opposite wing, they can perform very well there as well. And Cody Gakpo gives them an option from the bench to fill any of these spots or to just change the game plan altogether and play either as a target man at number 9 or to look to break the line from the wings. Up front, I think Liverpool are perfect at this point. I'm going to give them 5 out of 5 for their front line. One of the best front lines in world football and probably the best front line in the English Premier League. So that gives Liverpool a nice little total of 12 out of 15. I think this makes them one of the very strong teams in the Premier League that will be looking to do some serious damage on the continental stage to the rest of Europe's top clubs. In terms of a forecast for Liverpool for this season, I think in the Premier League, Liverpool are going to try and win it, but I think their midfield does come back to bite them a little bit, just that lack of depth and just some of these players being a little bit injury prone. So. I'm going to give them another third spot in the Premier League at the end of the season. I think they'll be happy with that, securing Champions League football, maybe wanting to win it, but based on how results go, we'll have to wait until the end of the season to decide whether that is a competent and acceptable result for the Reds. In the Champions League, I think Liverpool will end up going out in the quarterfinals. I think year two, squad depth comes into play, and the quarterfinals are usually played around that period of January, February, March, and that's the periods where Mohamed Salah is not available because he's usually on international duty with Egypt. So it will be very interesting to see if Liverpool can get the other players up front to gel with one another in time for that. In the FA Cup, I think Liverpool make it all the way to the final year. I think they want to win a trophy and this will be the one that they will be targeting. I think, however, they might not win the final based again on squad depth and players not being able to keep up with the tempo of the game, especially during that December period where English Premier League teams just have to play extra fixtures. And finally, in the League Cup, Liverpool will probably look to keep that trophy having won it this season. But again, I think this is going to be the kind of tournament where they will be looking to introduce younger players, get more experience and playing time for these players. We'll see a lot of the goalkeeper Callagher here, who I think is a very good goalkeeper, a very good replacement for Ellison. We'll see Connor Bradley as well, who proved to come in clutch for this team when Trent Alexander-Arnold was injured. And we'll probably see other players like Harvey Elliott as well, just introduced into the team through the League Cup. But I think as a result of that, I don't see Liverpool getting past the semi-finals of that tournament. 
All in all, I think Liverpool fans are in for a very exciting season. This will be a team to watch, a team that will be looking to score a lot of goals and just overwhelm the opposition with pure attacking threat. Hi, <laughs> uh, thank you for making it to the end of this video. Um, we really appreciate the watch time. Um, and the fact that you took some time out of your day to spend it with us talking about the sport that we all love um, If you enjoyed the content, why not, you know, drop a like down below or comment in the comment section um, Maybe even consider subscribing to the channel and I mean while you are here right now Have a look at some of our old videos too. Um, they should be appearing on the screen right now along with that subscribe button So you know exactly what to do um, <laughs> Thank you so much, it really helps with the YouTube algorithm. And have a great day out there, and we hope to see you again very, very soon. Thanks, stay safe.